Okay, front to back. First thing I have on here that you're gonna notice on top is the net. This is a Bass Pro Shop Conservation Nets, just one of the XBS. I got it specifically because it has these wide mesh nets that are rubber. Whereas most nets you get for around that $30 range are more along the lines of this guy. And if you crankbait with this, you know what happens. Uh, they don't make it very long. But the net stays here. When I'm about to land, I always land on the left side. I'll grab my net, immediately dump out. It's easier to do when the PDL drive isn't up. But I'll dump out, scoop him, and when I'm done, this goes right back. All right, we're gonna move this. So we're gonna pop open our hatch here. And I keep something in here important to me. One, my rain jacket has to go with me. Dry bag. These are essentials in my opinion. Warm socks, pair of pants, shirt. These are a change of clothes, right? If I get wet out here in the winter or any other time and I'm cold, I don't want to be miserable and ruin my day. I'll keep a change of clothes with me and change into them for emergency, in addition to layering up like I should. We're gonna pin this in here. We're not gonna leave it in there because it'll mold up on us, so you gotta take that out when you're done, okay? All right. The PDL drive. I do put stuff in it. I don't like to put stuff here. I see where people do, and I just, I don't like having stuff there, so maybe one day I'll change my mind. Inside, I keep my AirPod case so I can charge them up if they get low. I keep my headlamp in case I'm night or morning fishing. I need to be able to see what's in the deck or when I'm putting it out, so this is where it stays. And then, another pair of socks. Socks are important. I keep one in here, one in the hatch. Warm and fuzzies in here, just a standard low cuts in here. I like dry feet, as you'll learn. Except summer. Late spring and summer, who cares? Uh, I keep the, the wallet, the keys, everything else in a dry bag that I just kindly tuck in here throughout the day. Sometimes the phone will go in there if it's raining hard, but normally I'm taking the phone and just stuffing them under here. I have a IPX7 waterproof phone, so what do I care? So not to come back, but coming back, I do have lights. We're gonna see those at the end. All right. Over here, I have my GoPro mount, my GoPro Hero 7. Uh, I think it's the refuel. Yeah, with the GoPro Hero 7 with the refuel. refuel. I get about seven hours battery out of them. It says I should get about six, but I get about seven out of that refuel. Outside of that, I'll just turn it off and pop a battery in and leave it this way. It does kind of wobble, but it's not as bad as you would think with hyper stabilization. And I like to have it flexible so it turns. And I also have it so if the base doesn't move, I can move it. Very flexible, very forgiving to get that wonderful face shot from the chair. And also just to turn them and get the release or anything else going along. If I want a scenic shot of the trash can, I just turn it and I get it. <laughs> I have the little Yak Attack rod holder that just screws down. Stays there, it doesn't move a lot. It'd probably be hard to get off, I'm being honest. I keep my multi-tool strapped down in case it falls over the side because I've lost like 10 of these. Hand sanitizer required for if you get cuts or you're handling fish, right? You should always do that. Scale underneath my seat. My grips to go with the scale now, so I don't gill hook them, so I don't gill weigh them. And my fluorocarbon leader, my first aid kit, batteries, ointment, and in here, I keep my Old Town kit, and I put a little bit different stuff in it. Screwdrivers, wrenches, batteries, scupper plugs, uh, replacement pins, rings, a sponge to get water out of little nooks and crannies when it gets in. I can't get it out because I don't like it standing. Uh, extra pin, you know, that kind of stuff. I need to get some propeller parts to keep in there, like a nut and such. All of that just goes under the seat. And like I said, the phone will go in there too. Loose lures go over here. Unfortunately, I got a bad habit of that. So I'll just kind of tuck them there. They used to go in this pocket, but... Uh, I've got to do some readjustment on this. I want to get, uh, I'm going to get a metal wrap to go around it and hold it a little bit more firm. It's fine the way it is. It ain't going anywhere, but I want it a little more vigorous. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
I have these Yak grommet mounts, these Yak Attack grommet mounts. I like these, they look really good. Sometimes they pop up and I just kind of wedge it down. But there's one there. And there's one down there. Uh, on my old Garmin Striker SS7, I had the transducer mounted on the bottom, but I can't do it with this one. This is about, I think it was 10 and a half, 11 inches, something like that. You only have like nine and a half inches of clearance under here after you take into account a mount. And if you're looking for one of these mounts, let me tell you something. Yak Hobby has you covered. These Yak Hobbies, they're no joke. They're nice and thick. They have pins in them to reinforce them at all the weak points you would typically find. Uh, these are legit quality and they're really good. I ordered the wrong size and they were cool enough to send me the right one for free. This one I got from a competitor, uh, somebody here on YouTube, and it's not bad, but it is significantly, let me get over here. Uh, the thickness is about twice. It's kind of hard to see, but this is really about twice as thick. And like this pin reinforcement and it's recessed too. All right, moving on back. <laughs> uh, I put my transducer cables in this little side pocket now just because they can't go inside the kayak. But I left the power in there because why not? I don't have to take the power out. I'm hooked up as you're going to see. All right. Kai tech catch board for if I'm tournamenting, which isn't often, but it'll be a few more times next year. I'm actually going to be part of two or three clubs, two for sure, maybe a third, uh, just to push me a little bit more and make me better, right? So we're going to put that in there. It stays there, and I just slide them out when I need them, put them down, and then when I'm done, I just coast them right back under because I don't use this handle unless I'm like coasting and I want to hold it. But normally, if I'm just coasting somewhere, I've got the phone in my hand. <laughs> All right, we're gonna flip. I do have these Yak Attack cushions. They're really good, they're really comfortable, but this one actually, where is this side? This side actually ripped off last week, so I've had them about, I don't know, I can go back and look at the video. I had them most of summer, so, but $55, it lasted about a year. Uh, I'll give it a pass, it is really comfortable, but I get about a year out of them, I guess. Lumbar is nice and good. Let's pop this up. Okay. This is a long video right now. I'm going to do some editing. I've got my soft plastics bag. Literally, this is the soft plastics I take out. I don't take a whole fleet out with me like a lot of guys do. I probably should, but I take some swimmers, some worms, some crawls. You know, if it's summer, there'd be some frogs in there. Whatever, whatever I plan to fish with around that month or season in general, I try and keep in that bag, especially if I have a confidence bait at the moment. Like over here in my spinner box, not very full right now. Only thing I have in it is a V twin buzz bait. Is a V twin buzz bait from True or uh, from Strike King. That's not the True South one. And then some of my spinners, being my favorite one, this War Eagle and Mouse with a Kai Tech on it. That guy's clean, clean in all waters. Muddy, dirty, don't matter. All right, we're coming back to you. <laughs> all right, I got my crate, which I'm changing out. I'm gonna get the Wilderness one that costs a little bit more. Probably after the new year because I'm not concerned with it in the winter. But I want more space so I can do tackle and have a small cooler inside of it to keep my summer drinks cool. I drink a lot of fluids in the summer, guys. I'm talking, I'll drink like four Gatorades, two Monsters, and a water bottle out there. So a cooler is a must for me to stay hydrated and stay safe. All right. Obviously, I have rod holders. I leverage them. I leverage four right now when I go out. I have one open spot. I'm not doing anything with it yet because I'm debating what I want to do here. What I'm thinking about doing here to finish out my new GoPro pole, which my GoPro pole is just PVC. It's not glued together. It's literally duct tape at the seams, and then I've got electrical tape going around it just to give it some water resistance um, because I have a cable going around it for power to go to this camera. Now, the cable, it is water resistant. It does have this shielding on it where it'll kind of bounce off. But the camera is actually not waterproof, and the case is kind of beat up. i got to replace this old Acaso, but he's been good to me. And then, of course, I've got my 360 nav lot. So when I back way up, you see how tall everything is now? Whereas before, they all sit down kind of low. Now my camera is higher, and I can go down lower and get more of an out forward and downward angle. And then I have my 360 nav light straight up so everybody can see me and I can be safe. Uh, other than that, I keep my boots on the kayak in the winter, not so much in the 
in the summer, spring, or even early fall. But once that water gets down to about 65, I don't like it. Uh, I wear my Arctic Shield boots. These were actually sent to me by somebody. He got embarrassed when I called him out for it, but thanks anyway, bro. <laughs> I really like those. That was cool. The paddle. I've got this McGillan HT Carbon. Like a $100 paddle. Don't do that. Don't get a $100 carbon fiber powder paddle. Go get you a $30 McGillan five pound paddle because the reality of it is you need power more than you need speed and endurance with one of these guys. I have no intention of going six hours with this paddle in this kayak. It's not going to happen. I will bank and ask somebody to come and get me. Get you a power paddle, something with some weight in it so that when you're digging that water, you're really chucking along and getting some broad strokes. This is a slower paddle, not quite as wide on the paddles, and just the power is not there. Um, good if you have a kayak you need to paddle. Not good if you have a fishing kayak like a no town. Uh, I do have, this is a Navarra kayak fishing knob. Um, I'm probably replacing it, not because I hate it. I actually like the way it feels, but it holds water. If I'm out here in the rain, I didn't notice it, but I had water gather in there. And it was in there the next time I went to go out. I still had pulling water. So it is what it is. I'm probably going to go back with a ball on it. Um, get one from like Yak Hobby or something. I do like the part, but I wish there should be a cap or something, right? Um, 3D print us a cap to go over the top. That'd be pretty dope. All right. So we've covered everything outside. The thing that I get hit on the most about the ramps. My lights. A power system in general. I know a lot of people put their batteries in the front hatch, but as you see, I'm big about having my safety gear up there, you know, spare clothes and such. Over here, I have my 18 milliamp non-lithium. This is a lead capacity battery. He is heavy. He goes in the center cockpit and I've got a little Harbor Freight attachment that goes down in there. One second here. So all that's down in there to hold that battery is a little uh, storage container. And I just took the top of it. I've got another video of it you can look at. But the big thing for you to note is down in there is the Yak Power switch. It's the wireless model going to an 18 amp battery. Now, my rear camera, which has been on this whole time, he is actually running down to this USB port. It, it is a waterproof USB port, waterproof safe, at least marine quality. There's a power button on there that is touch control. So if I want to turn off my back camera, I just tap and then to come back on. I can pop it closed and everything's hunky-dory. Now you want to see it all powered on, don't you? So you see, I am actually legal for a motor. I've got the colors right, you know, red on the left, green on the right. That's what's required for a kayak in South Carolina if you want to go out with a motor. I went ahead and did it because I like to night fish. I like to feel safe out there. Uh, the only thing I didn't turn on, that NAV 360. So let me, if this is pitch black, you see me. You know where I'm at on that water. This, if I come in here and actually try and isolate away from any light, you can kind of see what we're talking about. I see everything. You guys don't see as much as around me, but when I'm fishing riprap and I have these lights on, as long as I'm not more than 30 yards out, I can see what I'm fishing. It's a great setup for me. I've got power on my sonar. I've got USB on my camera. I've got a nav light for safety. I know this. When I had the Pelican... Sometimes people would want to talk to me about the kayak. When I have this kayak and I come in from the ramp, I get accosted every time if somebody's there. Just the other day, I had some cat trying to get me to trade his boat <laughs> for my kayak. He just had a little John boat, and he was like, I'll take my electronics off and trade, but uh, no go. All right, guys, that's my vessel, front to back. Um, thanks for coming.